Hello, my name is Mike Ollerton and I'm here to discuss the importance of helping students develop confidence with their mathematics and their competence uh, at being mathematical. A key planning issue uh, is to offer students something that is easily accessible uh, which they can all make a start on. A strategy I frequently use is to ask either an open question or present an image for them to look at and discuss in pairs for the first two or three minutes. After two or three minutes I, will, I shall ask several pairs of students uh, to tell me uh, one thing that they've been discussing. I won't ask for hands up because I'm more interested in in uh, just getting a general response from a group of students. So it's just one thing that I want them to tell me about they've been discussing. In response to what they tell me I'm going to try to praise here on the board what they've said. After gathering some uh, information from the students uh, I will then uh, make it a kind of an open house where I will say well would, would any other pair like to say something that uh, hasn't already been uh, talked about, or uh, or they can build upon something that has been already mentioned. And in this way, I'm I'm interested in giving the students some ownership and some direction of where the lesson might be heading. Uh, I call this strategy one of drawing upon and drawing out. Dr sorry, drawing out and drawing upon. So having Having drawn out some information from them, I'm going to go a little bit further with my questioning uh, to use what they've told me to, to, to go further with their thinking. So I'm, 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 drawing, I'm drawing upon what they tell me. Uh, and again, this is, this is about ownership. It's about them uh, having a sense that uh, this lesson isn't all done and dusted. It's about, uh, it, it's, it's kind of dependent upon what we've already told the teacher. For example, a lesson uh, aimed at uh, summing linear sequences <laughs> with the Key Stage 2 class. Uh, I know that's a Key Stage 5 topic, however, uh, I'd been asked to do something on sequences uh, and, and I thought that's what we'll do. So I started off by asking them to tell me everything they already knew about the word sequences. Uh, if you're interested in pursuing the, this particular line uh, you might read pages 36 and 37 of Mathematics Teaching uh, MT271. Uh, so that's enough uh, uh, talking uh, about pedagogic issues just for now uh, but in preparation for the next short video uh, I would like you to choose three whole numbers between 0 and 10. I'd then like you to turn them into coordinate pairs where the, uh, the x ordinate, as far as you're concerned, is smaller than the y ordinate for each, pair, each of the pairs. Having done that, I invite you to think about where it might go next, where you might take the lesson next, having got the students to create some data uh, and yeah, and we'll see where that takes us. Okay. Hello again. Uh, I, uh, I would love to find out what uh, kind of ideas you came up with as, with regards to what you might ask the students to do next, having gained these uh, these uh, three pairs of coordinates. Uh, well, obviously, we can we can get them. We can ask them to to plot the coordinates on a on a square grid. Uh, now, plotting coordinates is something that uh, uh, children meet at the uh, beginning of Key Sage two in year. Four. Four uh, might even be in year three, but it, 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 it won't be. It won't be a new idea. So plotting coordinates, and of course, uh, 
they're all going to recognise that, uh, assuming they've plotted them correctly, uh, they've ended up with three, uh, with uh, with uh, right angle triangles. Uh, depending on the numbers they've chosen, some might end up with uh, isosceles right angle triangles and some with scalene right angle triangles. And again, there's some important vocabulary to be uh, 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 brought out uh, in that in that simple situation. Uh, so, mathematics, as well as needing to be accessible, uh, it needs also to be extendable. And so, uh, because they're right angle triangles, and because they'll have worked on areas of shapes in, in Key Stage 2, uh, then I, I, I think a nice extension task uh, for them will be to work out the areas of their triangles. Uh, and now there's a there's a, there are other things we can do, such as instead of plotting the uh, the coordinate pairs as uh, x being smaller than y, what happens when y is uh, y is smaller than x <laughs> when x is greater than y? <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, yeah. If you plot them, you'll find there's a, a very interesting geometric property to arise, and of course. Uh, why miss out on that opportunity when when it's there to be had? <clears throat> uh, uh, certainly in, in, in the lesson that where I taught this with a key stage two group, uh, the, the, the children were noticing different things and and this ultimately led me to asking them to uh, to work out well what would the area be for any three numbers which I'm going to call a, B and C. Uh, I thought I'd take a chance, uh, but certainly that kind of problem will be will be suitable in year 8, year 9 maybe. Uh, sorry, I should have said year 9, year 8 maybe. Uh, uh, but what happens uh, if we uh, if we then if we then have uh, six six coordinate pairs and we form a hexagon? What will the what what will the area of the hexagon be and how does that relate to the three numbers that we started off with? Uh, of course, uh, uh, students are going to need something, some, need some knowledge of Pythagoras' theorem in order to be able to work out the perimeters of, those, uh, of the triangles and of the hexagon. Uh, uh, but it's, it's all there to be had depending upon who we're working with uh, and, uh, and what, what knowledge one would expect uh, students to have in order to be able to uh, work on more complex problems. Uh, and if you want something for your, your A-level students, then, then try turning uh, the three numbers into uh, uh, three-dimensional coordinates, uh, or coordinates in a three-dimensional plane. Uh, do you call coordinates triordinates? I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But what does matter is that there's a cracking problem there for our our GCSE A level students, uh, which is uh, so plot the six the, the six points on a, on a 3D grid. Uh, what shape do you get? What will its volume be? What will its surface area be? All kinds of potential developments, starting from, think of three numbers. Uh, again, this uh, this the, the, the triangle problem is written up on in 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 the in the same article that I referenced in the in the first short, <coughs> in the first video. <coughs> excuse me, in the first video, uh, in MT two seven one. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.